very good morning to all of you i welcome you all for the next topic in the engineering thermodynamics course so it is the second lecture of classroom discussion topic that is normally be known as the cdt2 and in this class we are going to cover the various items the first one is the types of the thermodynamic systems and thermodynamic state property process cycle and the third one is intensive properties and extensive properties and the next one is the thermodynamic equilibrium concept so here uh, we are going to discuss about the four different types of the topics in this classroom discussion topic number 2 so all these are very very important one in the university examination point of view as well as in the competitive examination point of view so listen very very carefully so here what is the motivation that is why we have to study all these four topics in this second class in what way these topics are important to us so that is the motivation is it is essential to know the given engineering device or engineering application will be an example for the open system or closed system or isolated system so once you identify the type of the system and similarly how can you evaluate the performance of that particular the system and similarly we have to find out the given system is in the thermodynamic equilibrium condition or not so that is the motivation of this uh, important class and similarly i told you that for each and every class we are we should have the learning objective and similarly the learning outcomes so the outcome because we are having the four different types of the topics are there in this uh, classroom discussion topic so that's why i classified the each and every topic into the four outcomes the first outcome i am expecting from you is so after the completion of this class every student should be in a position to classify the various types of the thermodynamic systems and similarly you should give at least 3 to 4 examples for each and every the thermodynamic system and similarly the second outcome i am expecting from this class is so you should define the thermodynamic state thermodynamic property thermodynamic process and similarly the thermodynamic cycle the third outcome i am expecting here is so you should distinguish intensive properties and extensive properties and similarly what are the examples of intensive and extensive property and the fourth outcome is that is how can we define the thermodynamic equilibrium so that is very very important but that is when a system is said to be in the thermodynamic equilibrium condition so these are the four outcomes i am expecting from a student after the completion of uh, this class so now the first important topic is how can you define a thermodynamic system so that is very very important one so that is uh, here i have uh, given you uh, the definitions of the thermodynamic system so it is a definite quantity of matter on which our attention is basically concentrated so that is the system may be a quantity of the steam a mixture of gas and vapor or a piston cylinder assembly of an ic engine so that is the it is basically we have to define the important concepts that is how can we define a thermodynamic system surroundings boundary and universe so that is so here we can see the beautiful the schematic diagram so what do you mean by the system so the system is nothing but anything which are kept in consideration is called as a thermodynamic system that is the way we focused our attention on a particular device or a particular matter so that is basically known as a thermodynamic system and similarly from the diagram you can easily understand what do you mean by the surroundings so surroundings are nothing but everything which is external to the thermodynamic system which is known as the surroundings and similarly the boundary so what do you mean by the boundary so that is the system and surroundings are basically separated by means of a boundary so sometimes this boundary may be a real one and sometimes this boundary may be an imaginary one also 
So that is the importance of the boundary means the system and surroundings are separated by means of a boundary. Next, the last one is how can we define the universe? So the universe is nothing but whenever we are uh, summing up the thermodynamic system as well as the surroundings, then it is known as the universe. So these are uh, the four parameters are very, very important one. So that is in the exact way only we have to define. So don't define on your own. So each and every word or sentence is having its own importance. So define very, very carefully uh, whenever we are talking about uh, the thermodynamic system, surroundings, boundary, as well as the universe. So here, so by this particular figure, so you are able to understand clearly how can we distinguish or how can you classify the thermodynamic systems and similarly how can we distinguish the open system, closed system, isolated system. So now by going to this figure, the thermodynamic systems are broadly classified into control mass system as well as the control volume system. So once again, the control mass system is classified into the closed system as well as isolated system. And the control volume system is known as the open system. So that is very, very important one. So control volume and open systems both are same. And similarly, the control mass system is once again subclassified into the two categories. One is a closed system and the second one is the isolated system. So now how can we define the open system as well as the closed system? So now by this figure, you can understand. So what do you mean by the open system? So open system means there is a mass transfer as well as there is a energy transfer. Both are taking place from the system to the surroundings or from the surroundings to the system, then it is known as the open system. That is here we have to uh, importantly observe that is the mass. So the mass transfer is very, very important one because the thermodynamic systems are classified only according to the mass point of view. Because whenever we are uh, distinguish the open and closed systems, energy transfer is a common feature in open system as well as in the closed system. So, but the mass transfer is not there in the closed system. So you can observe the mass transfer only in the open system. So that's why, how can we remember the definition of the open system means, so here the both mass transfer as well as the energy transfer, both are taking place from the system to the surroundings or from the surroundings to the systems. And here I've also told you that the examples are very, very important one. So almost all engineering devices are examples for these open systems. So like the steam boiler, steam turbine, hydraulic turbine, gas turbine, reciprocating air compressor, rotary air compressor, centrifugal air compressor, centrifugal pump, so diffusion. So like that you can quote the any uh, devices for this open system. That is the 99.5 percentage of the engineering devices are examples for the open systems only. And uh, so the same thing here I've, read, uh, I've told you that is here the IC engines, air compressor, water pump, steam engine, boiler. So these are the, some examples of uh, the open system. So now how can you define the closed system? So just now I told you that the thermodynamic system classification is done only based upon the mass transfer. So whether the mass transfer is taking place or not, if the mass transfer is taking place, then it is an open system. If there is no mass transfer, then it is the closed system. So what is the common feature is in the both the type of the systems, energy transfer is taking place from the system to the surroundings. So that is a common observation from the open as well as in the closed systems. Now, what are the examples of the closed system? That is a pressure cooker. So whenever we are cooking a rice, and whenever we are cooking a dal, so normally we keep the dal or rice inside the pressure cooker. So whatever the steam which is escaping through the whistle of the pressure cooker, just whenever we are neglecting, so whatever the, the steam losses which are taking place whenever the whistle is on, so just to you, whenever we are not considering that particular one, but the remaining part of the pressure cooker can be treated as an example of the closed system. And similarly, the gas confined in the piston and cylinder also can be treated as an example of the closed system. The next one is the isolated system. Isolated system means uh, there is neither mass transfer nor energy transfer. 
so that is uh, it is totally isolated that is why the name is given as the isolated so that is uh, there is no interaction between the system and surroundings so that's why it is isolated from the surroundings so that's why it is known as the isolated system so there is no mass transfer and there is no energy transfer and we can say that the universe is a best example for the isolated system and the another example we can quote here is a thermos flask so here also uh, there is no mass transfer and there is no energy transfer up to a particular period of the time. So the same thing here, whatever we are discussed so far, that is the open system, it is also known as the control value. So how can you define the control value? It is a region in space separated from its surroundings by a real or imaginary boundary. So just now I told you that the boundary may be physically existing one or it may not exist also. So that is, it may be the real one or it may be the imaginary one. So the control value approach is nothing but the open type of the system. So it is a region in space separated from its surroundings. Next one is known as the control mass approach. So what do you mean by the control mass approach means? It is specifically identified that is fixed mass, which is separated from its surroundings. So I told you that the fixed mass or the control mass is categorized once again into the closed system as well as the isolated system. So here, so whatever the things uh, we have discussed so far, that is how can we define the universe, the system plus uh, surroundings is known as the universe and the isolated system. So there is no uh, energy transfer as well as the mass transfer. Energy transfer means there is no heat transfer and there is no work transfer. So like this, we are able to uh, give some examples for the open systems, closed systems and isolated systems and how can we classify the various types of the, the thermodynamic systems. So here it is an example of uh, the closed system that is the gas confined within the piston and cylinder. So it is the air or the gas which is confined within the piston and the cylinder. So it is uh, the example of the closed system. And apart from these open, closed and uh, isolated systems, we are also having the other types of the systems that is the important one is the adiabatic system. So how can we define the adiabatic system means there is no heat transfer. Adiabatic means there is no heat transfer but there is a work transfer because just now I told you that the energy transfer may be taken place according to either heat transfer or work transfer. But here in the adiabatic system, we have to strictly remember there is no heat transfer, but work transfer will take place from the system to the surroundings or from surroundings to the systems. Next one is homogeneous system and heterogeneous system. That is homogeneous means it is only the single phase. So whenever it is having the single phase that is a uniform in composition and chemical structure, it is known as the homogeneous compound. And heterogeneous means whenever it is having more than one phase, that is the two phases or the three phases. The example is ice plus water or water plus oil or water plus steam. So these are the examples of the heterogeneous systems. So similarly, after the completion of the, the topic number one, that is the thermodynamic system. So the second topic here is how can we define the thermodynamic state, thermodynamic property and similarly the thermodynamic process and thermodynamic cycle that we have to discuss in the second topic. So state, how can we define the state? So the state is a condition when the system is in the equilibrium. So that is whenever the properties have definite values, the system is said to be in a contained in a state. So that is very, very important. That the state is nothing but is the initial state as well as the final state. So that is whenever we say that initial state means the property values are defined at that particular point, then it is known as the initial state or the final state. So similarly, how can we define a property? So it is uh, the measurable macroscopic characteristic of a system is known as a property. So here I told you that the properties are normally categorized into the intensive property as well as the extensive property. So in the examinations is very, very important one to differentiate intensive as well as the extensive property and what are the various examples of this intensive and extensive property. So now here we have to remember how can we define the extensive properties. So extensive properties are dependent on mass of the system. So that is with mass, so these property values are also will vary. So like value. So that is the extensive property example is the value. So when the mass of the system varies, 
So the volume of the system also will vary. And similarly, the intensive property, it is opposite to the extensive property. That is, these are not dependent on the mass of the system. So not dependent on mass of the system, like uh, the pressure, the examples are pressure, is the temperature and the density. So this can be treated as an examples of the intensive properties. And something, the another important one here I have listed here is the specific term. That is, just now I told you that value is an example of the extensive property. But specific value is an example of the intensive property. So how it will be? So what do you mean by the specific value? So specific value is nothing but value per unit mass. Value per unit mass. So that is the specific means per unit mass of the substance. So that is the specific enthalpy. Enthalpy per unit mass. Specific entropy. Entropy per unit mass. So like that. So whenever we are having the specific all specific properties are an examples of intensive properties only. That is, enthalpy is an example of the extensive property. But specific enthalpy is an example of intensive property. Entropy is an example of extensive property. But specific entropy is an example of intensive property. Value is an example of the extensive property. But specific value is an example of intensive property. So with this, we can conclude that all the specific properties are an example of intensive properties only. So specific means per unit mass of the system. So here you can observe that is just now I told you that the thermodynamic state is changing from the initial state to the final state. So then that is whenever a gas is confined within the piston cylindrical assembly. So that is whether it is a two stroke engine or the four stroke engine we are able to observe the various types of the processes which are taking place in an IC engine. So just now here I quoted one of the examples as uh, compression process is taking place and expansion process is taking place, then how the state of the substance is normally varies. And the next one is the process. So now how can we define a process or in what way we can say that a process is occurred. So a process occurs when a system changes from one state to the other state. So just now I told you that, so whenever it is changing from the initial state to the final state, so then a process is basically defined through the equilibrium states. So that is uh, the thermodynamic process is normally classified into the reversible process as well as an irreversible process. And the other one is also known as is a quasi static process. So here, so therefore there can be no spontaneous change in any macroscopic property if the system exists in an equilibrium state. Now we are talking about the equilibrium, that is the thermodynamic equilibrium. So how can we define the thermodynamic equilibrium? So that is the thermodynamic equilibrium in nothing but, so a system is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium provided if it satisfies the three equilibrium concepts. So what are those three equilibrium concepts means? The mechanical equilibrium is to be satisfied that is the equality of the pressure or the equality of the force which is acting on an uh, area. So that is known as the mechanical equilibrium is nothing but is the equality of the pressure. And the chemical equilibrium is also said to be satisfied. That is the equality of the chemical potential. And the thermal equilibrium is also said to be satisfied. That is the equality of the temperature. So when a system is satisfying these three equilibrium concepts like mechanical, chemical and thermal equilibrium concepts, then it is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium. So that is very, very important. So this now I told you that. So mechanical equilibrium means the pressure is balanced. Thermal means temperature is balanced. Chemical means chemical potential is balanced. So whenever these three conditions are satisfied, then only a system is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium condition. So this, these are the topics which actually we have to discuss in this uh, classroom and I have already told you that so this is, these are the very very important and fundamental concepts in engineering thermodynamics. So in various competitive examinations like GATE, IAS and IAS and uh, other state uh, public service commission examinations also frequently the questions are asking on these important uh, topics. So that's why so in my classroom discussion topic or it is a self-learning topic also. So I am uh, discussing some of the previous gate questions. 
which are confined to that particular classroom discussion topic or the self-learning topic I am trying to uh, give some of the examples of the topics please uh, try to answer these questions after listening my class so here the first question I have listed here it is the topic is it is from the open and closed systems because our learning outcome the first one is we have to differentiate the various types of the thermodynamic systems and you have to give the various uh, examples of uh, the open system closed system and isolated systems so that is the learning outcome number one so that is the first question is open and closed system so he asked in gate 1999 an isolated thermodynamic system executes a process choose the correct statements from the following a no heat is transferred no work is done no mass flow across the boundary of the system there is no chemical reaction takes place within the system so now you can answer this question if you understand the concept of isolated system i told you that isolated system is nothing but there is no mass transfer there is no energy transfer that is neither mass transfer nor energy transfer is taking place from the system to the surroundings that is the definition of the isolated system so from which you can answer this particular question so there is no interaction between the system and surroundings so now the second question also here i have listed here so that is uh, which of the following statements are true above on uh, the above mentioned conditions the statement number one and statement number two so it is uh, the our learning outcome number three that is we have to differentiate intensive properties and extensive properties and uh, what are the definitions are very very important ones so just now i told you that extensive properties are dependent on mass of the system and intensive properties are independent on mass of the systems so based on the definition so he has given this gate question so now he has given the statement number one as extensive properties are those values in the composite differ from those in the original system and statement number two intensive properties are those whose values in the composite differ from those in the original system so now both statements are false or both statements are true so statement one is true and statement two is false statement two is true and statement one is false so here we are having the four options out of four options which one is correct one that is the statement one is true and the statement two is false that is the right answer for this question so similarly you can uh, attempt the next question also that is it is the gate 1999 an isolated thermodynamic system executes a process so here what is the right answer is so isolated system means there is no mass transfer and there is no energy transfer so no heat transfer is exactly right because i told you that energy transfer will takes place in the form of the work and heat interactions so whenever there is no energy transfer means there is no work transfer and there is no heat transfer so that's why both a b both are correct and coming to c so there is no mass transfer exactly so among the given options a b c d so which one is the right ones a b c all these three are right so if you know the definition of isolated system so the next one is so in the 1993 gate question an insulated result vessel contains a mixture of fuel and air the mixture is ignited by a minute spark the contents of the vessel experience so contents of the vessel experience what so that is out of the four options the c is the right answer that is increase in the temperature and pressure but no change in the energy because the spark is ignited so whenever the spark is ignited automatically the temperature will be increases and pressure also will be increases there is no change in the energy so that is the c is the right answer and similarly now it is a match the following so it is also given in the previous gate so based on the definitions of uh, open closed isolated systems so which one is the right answer so that is here the open system so open system means i already told you that there is a mass transfer as well as energy transfer so open is the first one so similarly insulated one insulated means there is no heat transfer closed system means there is no mass transfer but energy transfer will take place isolated system means there is no mass transfer and there is no energy transfer so which one is the right option means option is d so that is exactly they are matched perfectly so these are the topics uh, which we are going to discuss uh, in this particular one i hope uh, this is uh, very very informative and useful to you 
that is uh, in what way you can define the thermodynamic systems and classify the thermodynamic systems and how can we give the examples for open closed and isolated systems and how can you define a state process cycle and similarly the properties intensive properties as well as the extensive properties so i told you that is a very very important concept so try to solve the questions what we which we asked in the previous uh, competitive examinations so the very very important one so thank you very much for uh, listening uh, this lecture thank you we meet you once again in the next classroom discussion topic thank you